when Darren and I were talking about, well, what should we discuss on the show today? I, I think it was Darren's idea when we talked about a couple of insects that we've had some problems with. We actually had to spray for painted lady butterflies a couple of times now on our farm. Kind and of, then, kind of anyway. Well, yeah, kind of. And then this new bug, Darren, what's this other one? All right, gall midge larvae. <laughs> now, when I say larvae, that should tell you, oh, Hold on, I thought you said midge. Well, a midge versus a larvae, that's a little different thing. It's right. something flying around versus something like a little worm. And here's the big thing with both of these bugs is we're concerned about certain stages in the life cycle, not necessarily all of them. For example, the, the actual painted lady butterfly, do I care about the butterflies? Nope, I don't. They could be out in my field, I really don't care. Not hurting anything, I'm not worried about them, I'm not gonna spray for them, but when they're in the larvae stage, they're the thistle caterpillar. I don't want to see thistle caterpillars in my field if they're at high numbers because they can cause some defoliation and some issues with my soybeans. The good news here is Darren mentioned defoliation. Well, just straight out defoliation is not that big a problem. The problem is when you have a bug feeding on your plant, it does open it up for disease, so that worries me a little bit. And then the other thing I'm gonna look at is, do I have other harmful insects out in that field? If I do, I'm probably gonna pull the trigger on and spray insecticide. Well, thistle caterpillars are painted lady butterflies. We've got an issue with them probably one out of 10 years on our farm. So it's something that is not an every year deal, but it's just reminding us that we need to be out there scouting all the time every season because you just don't know which bug is gonna pop up this year. You may say, well, I spray for aphids every single year, fine. So aphids are really common in your area, but there's gonna be a whole lot of bugs of minor importance that could be out there like the thistle caterpillar or painted lady butterfly. Now, one this year that did get a little alarming to me because it is robbing significant yield, uh, especially in the area that I was in, in Southern South Dakota, extreme Western Iowa and Northeastern Nebraska, we're seeing kind of a new insect for soybeans. If you do a little research on it, you'll hardly find any. It's the gall midge larvae. Now in the spring, there's a little midge that will lay some eggs on very young soybean plants. So we'll see that midge out in fields a lot of times in April and very early May. And they lay eggs and then that soybean plant develops in May, June, July. And all of a sudden those little larvae get into the stem and they get just underneath that outer skin layer on the stem and so you can kind of see them in a little break in the stem, but they're pretty safe from the insecticides that we would spray. So how do you control these things? That's the real challenge. So we're trying to learn more about gall midge larvae. We tried some applications of bifenthrin or capture uh, right during that time period, and we did see that we made an impact and we greatly lessened the number of them. The tough thing is, when are those flights going to be? When are those midge flying? And when are they going to be laying their eggs? We may need to be out there two or more times trying to spray bifenthrin to time it just right to try to knock them out. So similar control methods, you're going to use insecticide either way. Bifenthrin's good, the other pyrethroid's not too bad, but it's much easier with the painted lady larvae as opposed to these gall midge, especially if it's the gall midge larvae stage, that's just about impossible. You've got to get it in the midge stage there. So I guess we would just encourage you, as we always do, be scouting your fields, use a good seed treatment, especially something systemic like Poncho Gaucho Cruiser, that will help a little bit, and then time your applications properly with insecticide. Insecticide's dirt cheap. You're talking two, three bucks an acre. It's no big deal. It's just, you've got to actually be out there and do it. So you may be thinking, well, how do I know if a problem like gall midge larvae is gonna blow up to be this big thing on my farm? You really don't. I was out on one farm call. I was calling on one farmer, stopping out to see him. And he said, you know, I got this problem and I'm losing yield in this same little geography every time I plant beans. So this side of the road's beans this year, next year it's across the road. And I seem to have more yield loss around the outer borders of, of these fields when we started figuring out what was happening, we started splitting open some stems and finding these little orange larvae in there. And we started asking a lot of questions and many of the experts that we turned to to say, hey, have you ever seen this before? And what have you done? Said, oh, that's no big deal. And oh, it's really rare. 
But then we started talking to more of the neighboring farmers and found this is a bigger area than what anybody was aware of. So if you've got problems on your farm and you find an, an interesting insect that you see, wow, there's more of these out here than I've ever seen before, start asking some questions, talk to your agronomist, talk to Extension or university people in your area uh, and see if you can find an answer to what's going on. Well, fortunately, we do have a great answer for our Weed of the Week. We'll tell you what it is coming up later in the show.